Hey guys, just wanted to give you a quick explanation um, on this task that we're working on, like getting ready for a pool party. Uh, this is not the easiest way to do it. I'm filming my screen right now, but I was having some microphone issues, so just bear with me. This will be a quick video. Okay, so Sylvia's having a pool party. She needs to clean her old pool, or the, the water out of the pool, and then fill it up again. So there's six different tasks that her and her friends are going to do. You need to try to arrange those in the most logical way. There's definitely one uh, sequence that I had in mind. I guess you could uh, technically rearrange a couple of those and it would still make sense. Um, but you probably wouldn't have the last activity as cleaned the empty pool since the whole point of this is to uh, empty the water, clean it, and fill it back up. So just make sure that it makes sense there. Uh, once you've once you've rearranged those, by the way, you can just put the numbers in the boxes here, you know, for step one through six. Uh, next, you have a, a graph here. You need to sketch the water level in the pool over time. So your two variables are the water level. You can decide to, to measure that in feet, inches, meters, whatever. Um, and then time, again, measure that how you want to measure it. Um, there's not one right answer for this, so I didn't give you the information on how deep the pool is. Uh, maybe you'll say it's four feet, maybe it's eight feet. Just assume that it's all the same depth throughout. There's not like a deep end or a shallow end. Um, but you need to, to draw a graph of how that water level is changing over time. Okay, so you should, since there's six activities, there should be like six different uh, pieces to that graph. Right, like sometimes the water level is increasing, sometimes decreasing, sometimes it would be staying the same depending on what activity you're on. Um, but yeah, go ahead and, and make your graph there. Um, next, just try to answer that question three as best you can. I won't go too deep into that. I think that's kind of self-explanatory. And then lastly, um, you're going to, uh, these are not ordered correctly, by the way, not necessarily. Um, but what I want you to do is tell me the interval um, of the domain, so your x values for when each of these activities apply. So, for example, if you say that take a break is the first activity, I think we can agree that's probably the lazy approach, but um, let's say you're measuring in minutes, you would say maybe from zero to, and let's say they took a break, oops, wrong thing. Maybe they took a break for 10 minutes, for the first 10 minutes, then that would look like that. You would say from zero to 10, right? Zero is less than X, which is less than 10. That would be the time interval for when they took a break. Obviously that's not the answer, but um, do your best on that. And then lastly, there's just a checklist for things that you need to make sure that you're taking care of before you turn this in. This will be due next Friday, um, which will be, I believe the 13th. And uh, we will have probably one more day when I'm back where we can talk about this and I can clear up any, any questions that you might have. So um, yours should not look like anyone else's really because you're determining how much time all these activities will take. You might have a different sequence. So the, again, there's, there's not one right answer. The way that you organize these is gonna kind of determine what your graph looks like. And then of course, what your graph looks like with the units is gonna determine how your specific uh, time intervals will look on this last page. So, all right guys, best of luck, I appreciate you and I hope to see you Friday.